Okay, great. So um, welcome everyone to our um, second in a series of three lunch and learn sessions, or as I made this joke last time, depending on your time zone, brunch and learn, because uh, it is a little earlier than our traditional lunch and learn on the East Coast. But I guess it's, it's really kind of um, lunchtime somewhere. So uh, let me pull up the chat here so I can see if there's any questions that come up. Um, <clears throat> so today what we're going to be doing is um, we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the new features in Gradebook and Lessons in Sakai 21, the, the most recent um, release. But before we do, just a quick little bit of housekeeping. Um, so today's session is being recorded and I will be sharing that link out afterward. It'll be posted on the Sakai YouTube channel in case you wanna check it out later. Or if you have um, folks that couldn't make it that would like to see it, you can feel free to, um, to send them there to, to view the recording afterward. Um, also, uh, I, I will take questions. I, I wanted to leave a lot of time for questions in today's session. Um, so if you have questions as we go along, feel free to type them into the chat. Please do stay muted though, um, unless you're talking. And I'll ask at certain points if people have questions. So if at that point you have a question, you wanna turn on your microphone, feel free. But um, during the, the presentation part, if you have something that you wanna ask real quick, feel free to, to type it into the chat. So um, with that, uh, let me go ahead and get started with some of the new stuff about Gradebook. So um, there were a couple of, of new features in the gradebook this time around. So um, one thing that's new is that you can now export the category average uh, when you export from the gradebook to an external spreadsheet. <clears throat> and then you also have some additional options for messaging students. So let me show you what this looks like. Let me go into um, Trisakai. I'll go into a course that has some grades on it. So I'm going to go into this um, oceanography course, and we um, we're going to go over here to the grade book. All right, so you can see as I uh, I've already got some grades in here for students. Um, <clears throat> so let's say that I wanted to export those grades. Now you do have to be, if you want to see this um, in action, you have to be using categories to begin with. So you need to either have categories only or categories in waiting, either of those two already set up in your grade book in order to be able to export the category average. Um, but then when you go to the import export, it's under custom. So if you go to customize the information included in your export, you now have a check mark here for category averages. Um, so I can select that and go ahead and download my export. And then when you open it up in Excel or whatever spreadsheet platform you prefer, um, you'll see that there's a, a category column in here. So you'll see like my discussions, these items here were discussion items all in the discussion category. And <clears throat> you can see it was also a weighted category because it's 50% of the grade. So um, this is the category average um, across those assignments. So, uh, so you can kind of see that in your export if you like to keep grades offline or to just kind of do some additional calculations and then re-upload or anything like that. You can capture that information. So that's one of the new things in Gradebook for this version. The other thing is um, there are some additional options in the message um, uh, feature. So in Gradebook, you may have discovered this or not already. Um, there is, if you go to this little drop down under each item in the Gradebook, there's a drop down menu. And you can now message students from there. So what this does is it sends a message to all of the students in the class. And um, you can, let's see, I'm gonna do a great job message. Um, 
And I'm going to send it to all graded students. This is the new part here. The, the message thing was, was new in 20. Um, now you can do some additional um, information of, about the, the people that you're sending to, basically. So if I send to graded um, students, I can identify minimum score. So this particular item was out of 50 points. And so I'm sending a great job message. So I'm going to send it to everybody with a minimum of 45 points. So that's gonna give me all my high scores basically. And then if I show recipients here, it'll show the students in the class that, that actually met that criteria. So I know who I'm gonna be sending this message to. Um, so I can go ahead and hit send and it will give me a little confirmation letting me know that that was sent. And so now what that does is it actually sends an email, an external email to the user's um, email on in their account. So uh, whatever that institution email is that's tied to their user account is where they would get the message. The instructor will also get a copy of the message sent to their email account so that they know kind of what was sent. Um, and uh, likewise, you can, let's see. Let's say I wanted to Remind some of the folks that I haven't graded, and listen, the reason I haven't graded them is because they haven't, um, let's see, remember. Yeah, the reason I haven't graded them is because they, you know, didn't um, get a particular, whoops, I'm sorry. Okay, so this is just anybody ungraded. Um, so I would have put a zero if they just, scored poorly, but if they didn't do anything at all, I didn't enter a score, I wanted to filter for those folks. Um, in this case, it's me, because I haven't posted, <laughs> and one student who didn't post. Um, so that will send it to the ungraded folks. And you can also um, filter by group or section. If you have multiple groups or se sections in your course, you can limit that to particular groups. And so now you'll see nobody shows up in my filter because um, neither of us that met this criteria were in group two. So that's another thing that you can do now from the message students uh, widget here in the grade book. All right, so any questions on those grade book items from anybody? Not seeing anything in the chat, so I'll give people a minute to chime in if you have any questions. Nope. All right, so we're going to move on to um, lessons. So lessons got quite a new, a number of new enhancements um, for this version. So some of the new features that were um, were contributed by uh, University of Dayton. They've, they've done quite a lot of great work on lessons. So um, some of these new features are there's a new menu reorganization. You'll see it, it, the menu looks different than it used to. There's some new page layout options that you can choose from. The reorder screen has been updated and it looks much nicer. It's easier to tell what you're moving around. Um, there's some new color options for buttons and sections. And there's also some enhanced information about item uh, prerequisites. So let's go through those again on Try Sakai. And let me just go into a course that has that stuff. Uh, we'll go into here. This course is pretty basic. I, I'm using the default skin here. So you can see what it looks like on default Sakai as opposed to the long site skin. Um, so the first thing that you'll notice when you go into lessons is that the add content menu is different. It used to be kind of a long uh, list of items and it's moved to a more column, kind of three column um, layout for the menu. And uh, it's been grouped into kind of logical sections. And this will actually also kind of move with you down the page. So if you're at the bottom of a very long page of content and you go to add, you'll see it down there where you are on the page as opposed to kind of popping up at the very top. Um, so this is one of the nice um, kind of UI things that was, was added here. Um, I do see a couple of questions in the chat. 
Uh, Amy wants to know one of the color options. Is it high contrast? Um, not specifically, although you can, excuse me, I'm fighting a sneeze. <laughs> okay, it went away. Um, <clears throat> You can choose a, a color that, that is high contrast, but, um, but it's not specifically um, made to be that. So, uh, and I'll show you what some of those options are so you don't get to see them. You can always go in and play with them yourself too, because it's, it's live on Nightly and also on our Tricycai tri server if you want to play with it if your institution isn't yet on 21. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, all the items were pretty much the same other than the reorganization there. But this add layout is, is brand new. So if you go to add layout, this allows you to kind of choose from a number of different page layouts. So if you like having say a three column layout or a two column layout or a two column with, you know, kind of the left-hand side um, bigger than the, the, the right-hand side or vice versa. Uh, so you can, um, you can choose which of those you like. You can choose if you want to make them collapsible or if you want to start to collapse. You can choose um, you know, if you want the force uh, sub, sub page button colors to match. Um, so all of that, it can be done from this screen. And um, so what I'm going to do, I'll choose a three column layout here. And I'll add it. And so it did drop it in at the bottom of the page, as you'll notice. And you see, I've already got a page with a few items on that. So one of the neat things that you can do is you can use reorder here. And this, this will probably look a little different to you if you're used to what the old reorder looked like. This is much nicer. Um, and you can still drag and drop in here. So you can, you can move these around. So I'm going to move them into the appropriate buckets where I want them and um, and then save. And now I've got kind of my page arranged as I would like. And, um, and I can choose if I want to do, um, let's see. If I want to do the button color thing, you can you choose from a number of button colors now. So you've got um, different ones. The legacy ones are kind of the old um, colors that you could choose from. These new ones are, are additional ones that have been added. Let's, um, let's go with purple, see what that looks like. And save, and you'll see that it, it gives you a heading for this area. And it also made my, um, my button match. Um, and then I can do this one as well. So if I want that to also match the heading, it should, whoops, I guess I gotta choose the color here as well. Um, so I can have nicely color coordinated buttons um, on my page. There we go. Um, so that's how the some of the coloring works. You can also, there are um, some colors here for just the, whether or not you want to show borders. And if you want, um, you probably remember some of these legacy colors that shades the whole area. Um, so those are the shading of the entire section area isn't showing up like that here on these. Um, do be aware that there are a couple of JIRAs related to some of the, the color properties um, because there's a couple of un unresolved things. So um, one of those is the background color for the, um, the non-legacy color schemes. And the other one is um, to do with uh, if you add just an, a, an, a button, subpage button on a page all by itself, and you don't use the force colors option, um, currently it's, it's not working as expected. So those two unresolved JIRAs are kind of out there just to be aware so you don't get frustrated if you try to add something and it doesn't work. Oh, of course. Okay, here we are. So what I'm talking about is if I add, let me add a sub page. You've, you've got this button here and you can choose a color. So if I choose red and add it, uh, when I go back to lessons, let me actually put this in a brand new 
You know what? I'm going to start on a whole new page so you can see what it looks like. We'll do it here. So we know this one's clean, doesn't have any, it's not combined with another section that was already given a color. So <clears throat> you should be able to choose your color here as well. So if I would do like a red button there. Um, but right now it's it's an issue. So this will work as soon as that fix gets um, contributed back, but just to kind of give you guys a heads up. But if you do want the colors, you can always, whatever section you're in, um, format the, the color here and make sure to choose that for a page option. And then you can pick any of these colors and they will work. So, um, so that's kind of a nice little formatting feature for you that um, is, is nice to be able to do without having to know a lot of custom CSS to upload to the, the site. Um, there's one other thing that is new um, to do with, um, with lessons subpage, and that's the enhanced information when there's prerequisites. So if I wanted to, for a subpage, for example, I want to give it a date. So I'm going to have a release date for my subpage, let's say in two weeks. Once I do that, it's going to actually show me when that item is released. So I can tell at a glance. And also students, if students are viewing the page, um, they'll see that there's a page there and they'll see that they're not able to access it yet, um, but they see that the page exists. It's not just missing. So those were a couple of little nuances there for um, indicating uh, items that have prerequisites. Um, so that's the new stuff in lessons. And let's see, let me check the chat to see if there's any questions here. Um, some people saying huge improvement on the layout uh, changes. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> it looks much nicer. Um, the reorder screen does look much nicer. Um, let's see. <clears throat> we have someone here who's totally new to Sakai and she wants to know, uh, does the YouTube channel have a tutorial? We have tutorials about certain things. We don't have a complete tutorial about everything, um, but uh, there are a lot of um, institutions that have developed very extensive resources for onboarding faculty. So I'm sure that they would be willing to share. I don't know if there's anybody on the call today that wants to share a link to some of their um, faculty tutorials, um, but the, uh, the community documentation can also be found on, um, um, there's a screen step site, it's a help site. Um, so I'll paste that link into the chat here. Um, just get that for you. And if you go there, it's not a video tutorial, but there are step-by-step -step, um, tutorials on how to complete certain um, tasks in Sakai with um, images of each step. So it's not quite a video, but um, it's close. And I see that Bonnie from Antioch has posted um, some of their YouTube videos um, that are available. So that's great. Thanks, Bonnie. And Rebecca has as well. So you've got lots of people chiming in with, with help resources. <clears throat> OK, so um, I know this went super fast. There weren't that many <laughs> new changes under these two items to go over. But if you have any questions about any of that stuff, I'd be more than happy to answer them. guys are a quiet group. Okay, Eric wants to know how do we get the recording link for today's session. I will send that out via email um, as soon as I get it uploaded to YouTube. Um, but you can also go to the YouTube channel and go to this URL here, which let me copy that. I'll paste that in the chat for you guys. Um, that is a link to the playlist for these three sessions, because I'm doing three of them. We did one last week on dark mode and dashboard. Um, this week's is gradebook, gradebook and lessons, and next week's is going to be on rubrics and LTI. So, um, so if you wanted to catch any of those, 
you can see the recordings for all of them at the playlist link that I just pasted into the chat. And um, it should be up sometime early next week. I don't know if I'll get the, the recording posted today or not, but um, by early next week, it should be available. But I'll also, also send an email out um, to the listserv to let folks know. All right, any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you guys for coming. I appreciate you attending. Um, even though the session was short, I hope it was informative for you guys. So if you do have any questions about new features on um, Sakai 21, feel free to reach out to me. And you can also go to our Try Sakai server to try them out for yourself. And um, if you don't already have an account there, um, you can set one up on the, the homepage of that. And so let me just, I'll paste that in there. It's just um, try sakai.com if you go to that um that'll take you to our sandbox site so all right well great thanks everyone Ho hope you have a great weekend and uh hopefully we'll see you next week for rubrics and lti bye all